Hello everyone and welcome back to The Frame Channel. Although the pencil market has suffered huge setbacks because of the invention of the ballpoint pen, the computer, and the touchscreen, the pencil industry continues to compete with the advanced writing technology of our days. Surprisingly, it's estimated that the world produces 20 billion pencils each year, with factories located all over the globe. But how is the pencil manufactured? Considering an established brand, such as Faber-Castell, which produces 2.3 billion pencils a year, a very detailed and streamlined manufacturing line is put into practice. The leads, as they're often called, are no longer made of lead due to its toxicity. Instead, you have a mix of graphite and clay that is rolled to the right consistency and then pressurized into hard tubes. At this point, they must be dried and fired in an oven, where it's cured to attain the right level of hardness. Afterward, they're treated with a thin wax coating and colored, sometimes using powdered dyes. The next step in the process is to mill a series of grooves into pencil-sized wooden planks, which in some instances are split in two halves. These planks are then filled with glue so that the leads can fit perfectly when inserted into the grooves. The other halves of the wooden pencil shafts are then placed over the top to create a tight seal. Finally, the planks are cut into shape, painted, and stamped. Few technological advancements could possibly be more well-established and touching every segment of the world's population than the humble pencil. First discovered in the mid-1500s, pencils are simple sticks of lead or graphite encased in wood. For centuries now, they've been one of the dominant tools for writing, artistic sketching, and drawing. The modern pencil as we know it, however, was invented in 1795 by Nicolas Jacques Comte, a French scientist serving in the army of Napoleon Bonaparte. One of the reasons for the resilience of the pencil in the face of modern writing methods is the decentralization of the product's manufacturing and distribution locations. Back in 2006, some 5 billion pencils were made in the United States alone. Nowadays, the majority of pencils are made in Asia, the Middle East, and Africa, with China leading the way in the export of pencils of all kinds. Since many of these countries also have a high consumption in companion stationary products, it makes sense for them to take the lead in pencil creation as well. However, due to fast-growing education infrastructures and a slower adaptability to advanced learning methods, Africa stands out as the most fertile market for pencil and stationery, with ever-increasing estimates for coming years. The global pandemic, however, did not leave this booming market untouched, as its effects were acutely felt in 2020. As a result of the lockdowns, schools were closed for long periods, which in turn had a negative effect on the use of stationaries. That is why this flourishing market slumped in 2020 before recovering again in 2021. In the West, on the other hand, pencils are also widely used for Scantron test taking, as the machines are mostly designed to read marks made by graphite pencils. Even during voting, though it might seem contradictory to use an erasable medium to mark something as important as a ballot, many experts still sanction the use of pencils in the exercise. Even if you consider the market to find other products for hack-proof voting, it's unlikely that pencils will go anywhere anytime soon. That said, what has really changed about the pencil-making process? Amongst the important factors in the success of the pencil market is the supply chain for graphite. Natural graphite is a byproduct of carbon and can be mined like any other mineral. It is found mostly in Asia, with China being the primary producer. Graphite can also be synthetically created using petroleum, coke, 
oil, and coal tar heated to extremely high temperatures. Graphite and its derivatives have uses that extend far beyond pencils. Over the years, the mineral has been incorporated into electrodes, batteries, and even solar panels, which are all technologies that have seen exponential growth in recent decades. And as the use of solar power continues to see increases in popularity and production, the graphite market has expanded as well. This is so because graphite is essential to the production of silicon, which is also used in solar panels as heat shield and thermal insulation. In fact, the market which was valued at $14.3 billion in 2019 is expected to reach $21.6 billion by 2027. This might seem like great news for the Asian economy. However, in August 2021, discoveries made by the Northern Graphite Company based in Bissett Creek, Ontario, Canada, indicated that higher quality graphite from their mines will be used not only for pencil making, but also to make durable lithium ion batteries and more. Despite its advantages and extensive global use, the production of wooden pencils is taking a massive toll on the world's forests. Over 100,000 mature trees are cut down each year to make the billions of pencils we use, as each tree yields about 170,000 pencils. In recent decades, however, the world has witnessed a massive drive towards digitalization in the education systems of most nations. With an exponential increase in the use of the internet, mobile devices, software applications, and many other types of digital technology for learning. Globally, countries are currently spending about 4.7% of their GDP on education and also allocating up to 14.2% of public expenditures to education. As governments all over the world strive to meet up with UNESCO's benchmark spelled out in the Education 2030 Framework for Action, it is obvious that digitalization is ushering in more advanced methods of writing, sketching, and drawing. That's the end of this feature on The Frame. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to catch us on our next video. See you next time.